Is this happening to you? then you're in the right place for video game training. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to defeat Malakath the Black Blade. If you wanna be an absolute legend and support the channel, then make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. My name is Azavar or Azza, now let's get into the video. I'll just show you where this boss is located on the map, so you can find him at the crumbling Farum Azula. Malakath is just here, and the closest site of grace would be this one, which is beside the Great Bridge. There will be a Draconic Tree Sentinel just in front of the boss arena. Technically speaking, you can skip the Draconic Tree Sentinel if you want to. I do also have a Draconic Tree Sentinel boss fight guide if you're interested. I'll link that in the pop-up cards. I'll just show you the setup that we're using for this boss. So we have two Keen Scimitars plus 25. We've got a Serpent's Bow and we'll be using Serpent's Arrows to apply poison. We've got the Golden Beast Crest Shield plus 25 and this has 100% physical damage negation. This is classed as a Great Shield and it only requires 24 strength to use. We'll also be using the Finger Sacred Seal so we can use Rotten Breath and apply Scarlet Rot. We've got the Crucible Knight's Armor Set. For the Talismans, we've got Erd Tree's Favor plus 1, which raises maximum HP, stamina, and equipment load. We've got the Great Shield Talisman, which boosts our Guardian ability. The Green Turtle Talisman, which raises stamina recovery speed. And the Dragon Crest Shield Talisman plus 2, which vastly boosts physical damage negation. We've got 12 of the Red Flasks and 2 of the Blue Flasks. In the Flask of Wondrous Physic, we've got the Crimson Burst Crystal Tear and the Green Burst Crystal Tear. The Crimson Burst Crystal Tear is very useful for Phase 2 because it steadily restores our HP over time. So it's got like a HP regen effect and that's really good to counter attack Malakath's Black Blade. Because if you get hit by Malakath's Blade, then it will tick your HP down and this Crimson Burst Crystal Tear will tick your HP up. So it helps with that aspect of the fight. If you want to get that HP regen crystal tier, then it's located here on the map at the Weeping Peninsula. You have to defeat the Erdtree Avatar to get the crystal tier. We'll also be using Exalted Flesh to boost our physical attack. And we'll also pop on some Fire Grease to increase our attack even more. It's not really weak to fire, magic, lightning or anything like that, but if you do use some Grease it can buff your attacks a little bit. Although he is quite resistant to Holy, so don't use Holy Grease. Malekith is quite weak to physical attacks, so if you can get up close and personal and start slicing and smashing away, you should do some decent damage. You could also use this unique item called Blasphemous Claw. This claw is designed specifically for this fight. It can parry the Black Blade on specific attacks. It can only parry the attacks where his blade glows a gold colour. I'll just show you on the map where you can get this Blasphemous Claw from, so you'll have to head here. What you'll have to do is go from this great bridge in this direction to the north. Keep on following this around and then head outside to the right and then down these ladders. And then when you get to this part here, you'll be invaded by this NPC called Banal. You'll have to fight and defeat him to get the claw. What you might find is if you're not being invaded by the NPC, then generally it will mean you have to go to Volcano Manor and have a conversation with him here. So make sure to talk to this guy a few times if you're not getting the invasion. This is located just next to the Volcano Manor site of Grace. You could also choose to use some Spirit Summons forward slash Spirit Ashes if you want to. We're going to be using the Ancestral Follower Ashes plus 9. Although, just keep in mind, in Phase 2, it's very likely that your Spirit Ashes will get deleted by Malekith pretty quick. With all that being said, let's jump into the fight. Okay, so first of all, we're going to whip out the Spirit Ashes roughly around there, and then use our Serpent's Bow with our Poisonous Arrows. Fire off a few shots. And then when he gets close, we want to switch to our Shield. You can use Barricade Shield... For a little bit of extra defense and ideally we want to be kind of moving in this direction if poison hasn't applied yet you can also pop some shots from here we want to get close to this uh, column here use it as defense we're going to swag the blue flask and then we're going to use scarlet rot to apply uh, you're going to use rotten breath sorry to apply scarlet rot and then get back behind the column Use Exalted Flesh. And next we're going to switch to Sword and Shield. Fire Grease. Head on up. And ideally we want to hit him with two charged attacks at this point. So hold down right trigger. That's one. We'll try for two. I think we got him with two. 
So the third one, if we run to here, hold down right trigger, hit him with a third charged attack, it will knock him down straight away. You can follow that up. Then we're going to get close, use the flask. So we've got our HP is now regenerating, shield up, barricade shield. So we just switched to the key item there, just as the gold blade was uh, on its way towards us. And we parried that, so as you can see that's pretty much the fight. Just need to give him a quick pop to uh, finish that off. And that is the fight. I will go over some more details and attacks. Okay, so next I'll show you a few extra bits and bobs. First, we'll take a look at a couple of things that you can do at the start of phase two. So once again, at the start of phase two, run to this line, hold down right trigger. And then if you can get that third charged attack in, which will knock him down and you can always get a critical strike in there. And you can apply your flask here or rebuff. You could also use this opportunity to heal up if you want to. Just run forward and pop your flask. Next, we'll take a look at the ranged aerial slashes. And with these, we essentially need to be counting how many ranged aerial slashes that he does. Depending on how many he does, he will do a different thing afterwards. So if he does three ranged aerial slashes, he's going to follow that up with a golden blade double spin to win attack. If you've got the blasphemous claw at the ready, then use that as he's on his way down to you. And you should get the parry, giving you loads of uptime on the boss. If you don't have the Blasphemous Claw at the ready, you could choose to roll in the direction that Malakath was coming from, and it should roll through the attack and help you avoid it. If he does two of the ranged aerial slashes, he'll then follow that up with like a sword plunge into the floor. This is another golden blade attack that you can use the claw to get your parry on as well. Once again, if you don't have the claw at the ready, then just roll away and try to avoid it. And if he just does one of the ranged aerial slashes, he usually doesn't follow that up with anything at all. So make sure to count how many ranged aerial slashes that he does and then react accordingly. You could also use that time to heal up or reapply your buffs or whatever it is that you want to do. Sometimes he might do the golden sword plunge into the floor directly from the column. So if he is up on a column, just keep your eyes peeled because he might do that. And of course you can parry that as well. Uh, once again, you can use these columns as a lot of defense. So if you need to buff up, heal up, uh, reapply any bits and bobs, just get behind the columns and pop those. These columns will also block his ranged aerial slashes. So you can hide behind those to avoid those. With a lot of his attacks, just having your shield up is insanely useful. Just keep an eye on our stamina and health bar here. As you can see, the shield is tanking a lot of that damage. Once again, check out the stamina and health bar. Shield up. Took a little bit of damage there, but not too much. A good opportunity to punish him is his slow overhead sword slam. So he kind of like holds his sword up in the air for a second and then kind of slams it down. Gives you a good uh, two or three seconds to put in some attacks. Watch out for this sword jam into the floor attack. If he jumps on the sword like that, it's always going to explode, so make sure to get out of the way. For the multi-slash combo, either try and get behind him, and if you can get behind him safely, you can put in quite a lot of attacks, or you could put your shield up and try to block as many attacks as you can, or you could choose to just roll and try and get out of the way the best you can. Either one of those would work, but if you want to get some damage in, then try to get behind him so you can punish. He also does a raw attack, which knocks you back a few meters. This one is nothing to worry about. But yeah, other than that, that is the fight, and hopefully that extra information helps.